years ago, a family member approached me and told me that there was a Cameroonian seminarian who wanted to really come back because he had taken some time off. He wanted to come back and join the priesthood. And I was then discerning and reflecting. While I was doing that, I didn't know that other people, another diocese were, were haunting or were opening the doors to him. When I found out he was already taken by this diocese, and uh, I was told by um, uh, Bishop Ditalo, okay, who is also the bishop here, that, hey, we have one of your brother, Cameroonian, who is a priest uh, in Houston, and he's doing marvelously well. He is a wonderful priest. And I said, wow, I found out it was him. And I blame myself for not acting as quickly as possible. Well, it's, it's interesting because the, Father Marcial came to me when he was a deacon, right after he was ordained a deacon. And so that's like the internship year. Um, and the reason he came was because there was uh, another priest who was having some uh, medical problems. So the Archbishop felt that with Father Marcial as a deacon helping me, he would be able to help uh, supplement what the priest wasn't able to do. Well, Father Marcial is Father Marcial and he's right out there and big and people just embraced him and loved him. And then when he was ordained a priest, it was so awesome because he stayed and the other priest left. And the people rejoiced that, you know, Father Marcial was there because his personality and his love of God in the church is just so huge. There was nothing he ever said no to. And he looked at it always as an opportunity for learning, an opportunity to express God's uh, very presence in the life of whatever he was doing. And, you know, that really uh, touched the people's hearts. And from that, he was able to continue moving forward. Describing Father Marshall, uh, it's what joys and energy. As a pastor, he used those two qualities to serve the church here and beyond. When I say here, it is parish. Yeah, uh, Saint Matthew, the evangelist. So for me, that's Father Masha, a joyful person and a energy caller, a energy person. And put those together to serve the parish, to serve the uh, people of God. The way I see Father Marshall as a friend, I see as a person that, uh, with a lot of integrity, a uh, very trustworthy person, and uh, very passionate about what he does, which is rare nowadays, <laughs> you know. Yeah. And um, also, um, he's almost more like family than friends, you know, because uh, he comes from the same village as my wife is from, and they know each other from uh, childhood. So uh, I could say that he's more family than friends. But uh, as I said before, he's uh, very passionate about what he does. And, and to me, it's very important. Father Marshall is just a little brother that we grew up together, especially in church. And uh, I've always been amazed by his curiosity about the service, about the priesthood. We were all altar boys and girls. I don't know, we had no idea of what that was, but we were all in there spending 
every holidays, Christmas, Thanksgiving, I would say Thanksgiving, maybe anything you can think of about religious, we were all together in church every Sunday. And if he had 10 mass per week, he would be there for the 10. If I come for the six, I'll start crying and complaining, but he would be there for the, all 10 of them. That was serious. I am very happy, very proud. And I can tell you, even before my son became a priest, I had a dream. In my dream, someone came over, took my baby away, dressed him up as a priest, and brought him back to me. I started thinking that one day, he may become a priest. As of now, I'm a proud man, very happy. Especially because he's always praying over the entire family. We are very happy and proud of him. Do not bore my audience. This is Father Marshall Oya, uh, originally from Cameroon, uh, more precisely from Tonga, and Tonga is in, in the western region of Cameroon. Born in 1975, that is 23rd of July, and uh, I am 46 years old, and I am a priest for the Archdiocese of Galveston, Houston, and uh, ordained 10 years ago, and I am very happy to have you with me. I'm coming from a family of eight, uh, and I am the baby. Uh, I am the baby of the family of eight. I have uh, five sisters and uh, two brothers, and among those, I uh, have two sisters with me here in the United States of America, and uh, one in Dallas and another one in uh, Washington, D.C. And I do have my mom who lives also here with my sister in Dallas. And uh, my mom is uh, just a wonderful, great example, a hero. I always call her my hero because uh, she is uh, a wonderful woman. After the passing of her husband, uh, she succeeded to raise us up without uh, uh, the husband. And uh, I, I just give thanks to God for the gift of my mom in my life. My whole life uh, I passed in the church and uh, growing up uh, the only thing I could think of doing was to become a priest because of our proximity with the Catholic Church and coming from a very practicing Catholic family uh, I passed my whole time within the framework uh, of the church and doing a lot of activities in the church. So I grew up in the uh, church's setting, and uh, I wanted to be just like the father celebrating Mass every single Sunday and every single day. And, uh, and I started thinking of my vocation uh, when I was five, surprisingly. So I grew up with that in me, uh, although I had also maybe some dreams or some calling to be professor, to be teacher, or to work even in the medical field, but uh, to be a priest was very, very central in my growing up. Oh, 
our ambition was were, uh, I mean, yes, our sir. ambition here were to serve and become priest mm -hmm. today. And uh, he had particularly uh, a demonstration of that uh, priesthood since the childhood by celebrating mass with cookies. Okay. By celebrating mass with cookies. So he was using, his using cookies as a, yeah, as as a, as a, as a holy God. communion. Yeah, yeah. Holy communion. Yeah. Uh, gathering kid, children of his age in, in a quarter, celebrating with mass, you know, with cookies. He went to the seminary, he didn't give up. He's always in church, looking for people, making friends, getting to know them. Any bishop, any summer camp in church. It, it, it was like an addiction or something, you know, even growing up, because at one point he was just a kid. He didn't know nothing. But he was following all these people in church when like we have like a big ceremony, let's say for like uh, confirmation. You know, we had like a confirmation in the village maybe once every three, four years. And the bishop would come, it would be like a big celebration. All these priests would come and lined up. He's going to be the tiniest one in the middle of it, trying to, to, to be the center, trying to see everything that they're doing. So curious. It wasn't just unhappy. I think it was a calling since day one. My journey to St. Matthew the Evangelist, wow. Uh, it's been a very long journey uh, because uh, right now I am the pastor of St. Matthew the Evangelist Catholic Church. And uh, my life uh, uh, as a seminarian, I started in Cameroon. Uh, uh, I was accepted as seminarian for the Diocese of Bafusan uh, by late uh, uh, Bishop Wunking. Uh, Andre, and uh, that was uh, uh, in the year 1997. And I was teaching uh, um, at St. Thomas d'Aquin uh, uh, College or high school in, uh, in Bafusam. So after this year of discernment, I was sent to Bambri. Bambri is in the Northwest uh, province, and uh, that is uh, the English part of Cameroon. And I started my studies over there at the uh, St. Uh, Thomas Aquinas' major seminary in, uh, in Bambui, Bamenda. So I studied philosophy uh, for three years. And after that, I had to come back again at St. Thomas d'Aque uh, to teach. Uh, that was my pastoral year to teach, and I was teaching over there, and after that I had to go back uh, to study theology. Like I said earlier, uh, going through my years of theology, it was, uh, I started questioning about my vocation, questioning about my life. Is it where God is calling me to be? Is it where I will find fulfillment for my life? Is it where I will find happiness um, through my whole life? So uh, that was going through in my mind and in my... So I had to stop formation. And after that, I went to the Catholic University on my own. Uh, that is in Yaoundé. Uh, that is the University of Central Africa, Catholic University for Central Africa, uh, which is in Yaoundé. So I, I was there and I, I, I had a degree, master degree in religious uh, studies uh, there. And uh, during that years of studies, and I, I applied to come to the United States of uh, America for a visa, and the visa was granted to me. And I said, okay, this is a wonderful opportunity for me to come and begin a new, a new life, new adventure, new country, new everything. And I arrived in this country, and I was studying, and I was just doing 
everything that a young man of my age will, can do. And uh, so uh, that was the time that uh, while studying, I was uh, admiring uh, the uh, medical field uh, to go and uh, work maybe in the medical field because I had nothing to do again with the seminary because I stopped completely my formation. So why then? Uh, I think the voice was uh, being heard every time by me that Marshall, you need to go back to where you belong. Uh, you need to go back to the seminary. And after passing some time outside uh, like that, just doing uh, what uh, younger people of my age were doing, I, I got that voice. I got that voice from God. And uh, I just said, okay, Lord, here I am. I have to come back. And I was accepted as seminarian for the Archdiocese of New York. And uh, when I came down here in Houston I, uh, to visit friends, I found that Houston was just a wonderful and a beautiful place. I said, this is where I, I, I would be. And that is how I asked for my file to be transferred here in Houston. So I uh, was accepted as seminarian for the Archdiocese of, uh, of Galveston, Houston, a uh, year in, uh, uh, in Texas. And um, after being accepted, they sent me to different parishes to do pastoral uh, years. I was at Prince of Peace for one year. After Prince of Peace, I went to St. Mary Seminary, uh, where I studied again another uh, years of theology, and I graduated from there with uh, another Master's in Divinity uh, from the seminary, uh, from St. Mary Seminary. Uh, and when I was studying, I was also sent to another uh, pastoral year at St. Rose of Lima, St. Rose of Lima here in Houston. And at the end of this year at St. Rose, I was ordained uh, as a deacon. That was uh, in the year 2011, uh, 2011. I was ordained as a deacon. And after my ordination as a deacon, uh, they sent me for my deacon years. After the ordination as deacon, you have to uh, pass at least uh, something like a year uh, doing some ministries as a deacon, preparing yourself to become a priest. So I was sent as Saint, uh, Saint Ignatius of Loyola in spring, uh, where I uh, was with Father Norbert Maduja. And uh, so he uh, uh, took good care of me as a deacon. And uh, just after seven months, I was ordained as a priest. Uh, and that was uh, January 14, uh, 2012, uh, at the Co Cathedral by Cardinal Dinardo, by Daniel Cardinal Dinardo, the Archbishop of Galveston, Houston. And after my ordination, my first assignment again was at St. Ignatius Loyola. And I worked over there at St. Ignatius Loyola for uh, two and a half years. And uh, after those years, I was sent at the Co-Cathedral. I was sent to uh, the Co-Cathedral, actually, uh, for another year as a parochial vicar. And the reason they do that isn't because the man isn't necessarily ready to be a pastor, but rather it gives them another experience that they can draw from. And I would have to remind him of that. You know, it's like, he says, I'm ready, I'm ready. I say, yeah, you are, but not everything is done the way we do it at St. Ignatius. So this gives you an opportunity to learn another way of doing things and then deciding you can throw this out or you can and keep this or vice versa. So it was another opportunity to grow and expand. I passed 11 months over there and boom, here we are. When I was on vacation, I received an email from uh, the vicar of the clergy uh, telling me that Father Marshall, the Cardinal has nominated you uh, to be administrator of St. Matthew, the Evangelist Catholic Church. Boom. It was a wonderful and great news. So, yes.
Father Marshall has gone from achievement to achievement. And I'm delighted to be part of the celebration of this day, which in fact is the celebration of the priesthood in him. My dear brothers and sisters, you are so welcome to our parish, St. Matthew, the Evangelist Catholic Church. A special welcome to Bishop Jerome Fejo, the Bishop of St. Thomas in the U.S. Virgin Islands, the very first African uh, native to be appointed as Bishop in the United States of America. Welcome, Bishop Jerome Fejo. Our homilies today is uh, very Reverend uh, Norbert Maduja, uh, the Episcopal Vicar, and he is uh, the pastor of uh, uh, St. Ignatius Catholic Church in Spring. Welcome, Father Norbert. Without further ado, I would like to invite uh, our bishop uh, to uh, continue with Mass, and uh, I will welcome you all at the end of the Mass. Thank you very much, Bishop. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Isaiah. For Zion's sake, I will not be silent. For Jerusalem's sake, I will not be quiet until her vindication shines forth like the dawn of her, and her victory like a burning torch. Nations shall behold their vindication and all the kings your glory. You shall be called by a new name pronounced by the mouth of the Lord. And as a bridegroom rejoices in his bride, 
so shall your good God rejoice in the word of the Lord. The second reading, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 4 through 11. Brothers and sisters, there are different kinds of spiritual gifts, but the same spirit. There are different forms of service, but the same Lord. The word of the Lord. God has called us through the gospel to possess the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. There was a wedding at Cana in Galilee. And the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus and his disciples were also invited to the wedding. When the red wine ran short, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. And Jesus said to her, Woman, how does your concern affect me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, Do whatever he tells you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. A special welcome to all who have come from places outside of our beloved Archdiocese to join in celebrating Father Marcial Loya's 10th anniversary of priesthood. My name, as Father Marcial said, is Father Norbert Medusa, and I'm the pastor of St. Ignatius of Loyola Parish in Spring, as well as the Episcopal Vicar from the Northern Vicariate of the Archdiocese. But my greatest claim to fame is that I was Father Marcial's supervisor, <laughs> pastor, mentor, rectory mate and friend during his diaconate and first priestly assignment. While it's a true honor for me in every respect, if he has messed up at all, it's not my fault. <laughs> it's like the parent who did all you could and sent that child out into the world and somehow that child found a different brain than the one you trained. <laughs> Your Excellency, on behalf of our Cardinal Archbishop, as the Episcopal Vicar, I welcome you in a special way to our diocese today and members of Father Marcial's family. I remember that day of ordination very well, along with his first Mass of Thanksgiving at St. Ignatius of Loyola Parish. The people of the parish community continue to speak of Father Martial as if he just left us last week. That says a lot about a priest, to be remembered with fondness as the man and his ministry among us. Obviously, you too have found the presence of the Lord in Father Martial and his ministry to come from all over the world, literally, to offer thanks and praise to God on this special night. And as a native son of this great archdiocese, again, I thank you for coming. Ten years ago, Father Marcial asked me to give the homily at his first Mass of Thanksgiving. So I pulled that homily from my files to review what I had said. And I found these words of advice. Brother, when you act out of or in love, you act in God. Since God knows no bounds, love knows no bounds. The people of God are demanding, and there is no way more, and there is way more of them than they are of us. 
So take time for yourself. Balance your life. Pray. Work hard. Rest. And play hard. And the joy that radiates out of you today will continue to shine brightly throughout your life. It does my heart good to know that you, my brother, not only heard my words, but took them to heart. I've seen you especially play hard on Facebook. <laughs> Because today, exactly 10 years later, the one word that almost everyone uses to describe Father Oya is joy. Amen. Father Marcial is joy. <laughs> he exudes joy. He radiates joy. There's nothing like getting out of your car and trying to put your collar on, balance your books, do all this, and you hear, <laughs> the parking lot. The joy of being a priest is in this man. Bishop Robert Barron, the great author of our times, wrote, the surest sign that God is alive in you is joy. Thus, we should be aware that when we are in the presence of a joy-filled priest, we are in the presence of God. As His Excellency said this weekend's Gospel, and you've heard it, is that of the miracle at Cana, or as John the Evangelist calls it, the first of signs. It is the third epiphany, or manifestation of God, in the midst of the people. <laughs> Tears are given from the Spirit as well, so we'll let him sit on Spirit in a minute. celebrate not just the passing of days and months and years. Rather, we celebrate what the Lord God has done and is doing in us and in you, through us and through you, so as to be effective agents of him who is all love and all joy. When you act out of or in love, you act in God. Since God knows no bounds, love knows no bounds. Live in love, and you will live in joy. A heart filled with God is a happy heart that radiates an infectious joy. It is immediately evident. So let us not lose that joyful, humorous, and sometimes even self-deprecating spirit, which makes people amiable even in difficult situations, allowing you and us as pastors to smell like our sheep. If joy is a sign of God's presence and God is love, then may the love and joy we experience through you, our brother, our friend, and priest, Father Marcial, always reflect the manifestation of the Lord into our world. Along with all your brothers, I thank you for your ministry. Thank you for being a part of this archdiocese. And thank you, Lord God, for the gift of your son, our priest, Father Marcial Oya.
Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, and through Christ our Lord. For through his Paschal mystery, he accomplished the marvelous deed by which he has freed us from the yoke of sin and death, summoning us to the glory of being now called a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for your own possession, to proclaim everywhere your mighty works, for you have called us out of darkness into your own wonderful life. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as with our end we acclaim. <laughs> Exactly 300 sick 
3,653 days. Before, when I was with my dear friend and a pastor, Father Norbert, I used to count the days. And I used to call myself baby priest for many years. I'm still baby priest, even after 10 years. But I must say that anxious and fearful and unworthy as I was, God still chose me to be messenger of his good news. God always reassures me, my son, do not be afraid, for my grace is sufficient for you. I am not here today to start naming all the blessings, accomplishments, and achievements realized throughout my 10 years as priest. No. I am here to reiterate that God is love. That God loves me. That God loves you. And God expects us to love one another as he has loved us. I want to thank also my mom, Mama Bernadette Fengo, uh, my brothers and sisters, and uh, words cannot express my great love and thanks for your continuous support in my priestly ministry. Mama Mani, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. And I have uh, my sister Mireille and the husband Makia, she is here. And I have Marie Claire and uh, Dr. Dominique Jinko, they are here. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> my family coming from uh, uh, New York. I have people from New York. I have Mama Obista, Bankwe, and I have Edvija, and I have. Uh, 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 Anika and uh, uh, Eugen is uh, somewhere in the please. You guys are awesome. Thank you for being part of this. Father Norbert, what can I say? <laughs> wow. Well, believe me, Father, you are a father. And I can say it clearly, what you taught me never went into waste. If you see this church as wonderful as it is today, it's thanks to you. I learned from the great master, from the great priest. Thank you very much for being part of So again, gracias a todos. <laughs> que Dios te Bishop, will you give us your blessing? It is often times said that the priest. The priest who receive the seminarian who has just been ordained really makes a big difference in the life of that priest. So we thank you, Father, for what you <laughs> Also like to ask you to express our gratitude to the Cardinal for accepting our brother, our son, to become a priest here. Had he not done that, people would not have seen the wonderful things 
the gift, the talents that this priest has. So thank him for us. And thank him also for another week. Now many of you know me. You know that I am in the Virgin Islands. So feel free to jump. <laughs> <laughs> but when you do come, please do not come during the hurricane season. <laughs> The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. I am very proud, very, very proud. I wish someone could open my heart and read my joy, my expression, my thankfulness, my thanksgiving, just so people will know what I feel right now. And not just that, when I come here and see all these people, all the members of the church, you know, praising me, thanking me for everything that I do, carrying me up a high, even forgetting that I'm a disabled person. Really, I can only say thank you. Thank you very much for everything. I would say that I have the most beautiful parish in the world, and uh, I love my parish. And uh, my parish is made up of 53% uh, Hispanic, and uh, also 40% Anglo, and uh, the remaining are uh, the Filipinos, uh, the, P the Asian uh, uh, brothers and sisters, uh, made up of uh, Filipinos and Vietnamese and I have some few uh, African-American and uh, people from African descent in this parish. What a beautiful diversity. And I am thrilled to be pastor in this parish. And uh, uh, to answer your question, are they very good people? They are definitely the most beautiful people uh, that I have encountered because uh, the acceptance and the, uh, the way they opened their arms and welcomed me in this parish, it was very, very amazing. And uh, I couldn't ask for more than to have uh, this wonderful, wonderful set of people. So I am loved in this parish and I love my parishioners. And uh, yes, uh, so as you, you know, being in a parish of 53% Hispanic, obviously you must uh, speak Spanish. Yes, and I do speak uh, Spanish and uh, I, I do understand my people and they understand me and we meet uh, halfway and uh, we really help one another. So. I am a very happy pastor here at St. Matthew the Evangelist Catholic Church.
all the way from Cameroon, Father Greg and Shaw. Just a word. When Father was sleeping in church, I just found my eyes to also wait. Even now that I'm talking, how can we praise the Lord? How can we glorify the Lord for this wonderful day? Father Marshall, you make me proud. You make me proud. And I really feel proud today. The honor is ours. May God continue to bless us every day. Uh, yes, as I'm talking, Father Morris too, you see, it's like handing a baton. Father Morris was the one who took care of me, and now Father Marshall, and also Father Norbert. Thank you, Father Norbert. In fact, you crowned it all. May God continue to bless each and every one of us here. Uh, I may have time within the occasion to say something, but now let me bless it for you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. business administrator here at St. Matthew's. I have worked closely, very closely, with Father Marshall for the last six and a half years that he's been here, so I believe I know him pretty well. I want to tell you some of the characteristics that I see in Father Marshall. To do this, I'm going to use some visuals tonight. So the first one is M for Marshall. M is for meticulous. For those who know Father well, you will agree this describes him. He is meticulous in his appearance and how he is exacting in the projects that he undertakes and in all things. Yeah. He always plans ahead and is detailed in what he undertakes, making sure that each step is followed very correctly. A is for always expects the best. Father Marshall has a deep ability to challenge each of us to produce our best work. Even if we don't know how to proceed with the task, he expects us to figure yeah. it out. He is a powerful speaker and has been asked in the past to speak at the Archdiocese, a recognition. within the last few months. We almost lost our, uh, we were at risk of losing our food source for our food pantry, which feeds 500 people a month. 
there were some changes at the Houston Food Bank, and we were kind of in the middle of that. We didn't know whether we were going to continue getting the food, and it just seems like we were getting nowhere. Eventually, Father took me aside and he said, we must find a way to keep our food pantry open. This is who we are. To Father Marshall, the food pantry was just not just another ministry we engage in, but is actually feeding the hungry, who has, he has great empathy for. This is who he is as a person. So in conclusion, I want to congratulate Father Marshall for his 10 years in the priesthood and thank him on behalf of all the parishioners for being meticulous, always expecting the best, religious, resilient, reliable, tireless, involved, for always listening, for his leadership, and for being kind. Please. In early June of 2015, I got a call in the parish office from a young priest. He said he'd like to come by and tour the church, the office, and of course the rectory. That was my first conversation with Father Marcia. This was a week or two before his official start date at St. Matthew's, so obviously he was really excited to see where he would be calling home. It was evening when he arrived and the tour began. Afterwards, I and two other parishioners took Father to dinner. It was during that dinner that I thought to myself, everything is going to be just fine. And that's especially important, for as you see, St. Matthew had gone through a number of years of temporary and or visiting priests. Parishioners were leaving. They were going to other parishes. The collections were suffering. We needed stability. A few months after Father Marshall arrived, I was downtown answering my call for jury duty. I didn't get selected, so I headed to the bus back to the park and ride lot. While waiting for the bus, I looked over and Father Norbert was sitting next to me. He had also received his jury summons and like me, he wasn't selected. But he told me he always wears his Roman collar when he goes on jury duty, <laughs> just for that purpose. <laughs> so after I introduced myself, his face lit up and he said, oh, how is Father Marcial doing? We ended up sitting next to each other on the bus and talked the entire trip back to the park and ride lot. As we got off the bus, Father Norbert said similar words that I had thought to myself several months earlier. He said, you guys are going to be just fine. Well, too bad Father Norbert's not here because we were both wrong. We aren't just fine. <laughs> Over the past six and a half years with Father Marshall as our pastor, St. Matthew's has not only bounced back, but we have grown substantially in both parishioners and in fiscal security. We've gone through a much needed facelift, both in the church and the rectory. We continue to work through the pandemic and we even managed to have a modified fall festival that went beyond our expectations. All this under his leadership. So you can see, we're not just fine. We're doing great. On behalf of Deacon John Adams, Deacon Tom Piotrowski, and Deacon Candidate Carlos Chavez, we thank you for the past six and a half years and congratulating you on what we hope will be one of many milestones that you will achieve as a priest. So lift your glasses. May God bless you now for many years to come. Tina Staples. Well, 
Juan and Marcia. Since you became the pastor of St. Matthew's the Evangelist, I have seen the parish grow and flourish. A growing number of parishioners and renovations to the church and rectory that have taken us out of the 70s and into the present. Like a good shepherd, you have guided and taken care of us through good times and bad. A constant beacon of faith, hope, charity, and love. For us here in Houston, in Texas, and to the people in Cameroon. You are a light. Um, you have a light in you that shines brightly, and your passion and enthusiasm is infectious. I'll go easy on saying that word because infectious and contagious right now isn't necessarily the best timing, but it's very true. So thank you for all you do, and may God bless you now and all. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to call on the former Pastoral Council President, Robert Ramirez. Good evening. Good evening. For those of you that do not know me, my name is Robert Ramirez, and I would like to propose a toast to honor Father Marshall Oya for his 10th anniversary of his priestly ordination. I understand that Father Marcial's mother is present. Senator Robert Kennedy once said, Whenever you find yourself in a tough situation and you're about to enter the battlefield, never forget to bring mother along. We have many guests here tonight that speak Spanish. So please allow me to translate. Muy buenas noches. Para las personas que no me conocen, me llamo Roberto Ramirez y me gustaría proponer un brindis en honor del décimo aniversario del aniversario de la, ordin de la ordinación del sacerdocio al Padre Marcial. When Father Marshall arrived here at St. Matthew six years ago, almost seven, he shared with us his experience on how he made up his mind of why he decided to become a priest. At one time, he walked away, but soon he would receive a sign and that sign marked his future, and he returned to the seminary and continued his studies to become a priest. Well, that sign has gathered us here today. Because today we celebrate his 10th anniversary from the time he was ordained. So today, I want to share with you in a time that I was going through some tough moments. Six years ago, soon after Father Marshall arrived here at the parish, we were finishing up, putting up everything away after a Sunday Mass. He asked me what I had planned for the Sunday afternoon. I told him that my mother-in-law was in the hospital and that I was going to go visit her. I told him that my mother-in-law had cancer and she, had, and she was giving six months to live. Father Marcial quickly offered if it was okay with our family for him to visit her and pray for her. He dropped all his plans that Sunday afternoon and was there sharp at 4 p.m. as he said. He arrived and said hello to the family and soon prepared himself to pray. As we were all gathered around her, her bed, the room all of a sudden became very quiet. Father Marcial slowly leaned over to me and asked if my mother-in-law spoke English. I told him no. 
She only speaks Spanish. He said quietly, I have just received a sign. I asked him, is this a sign about my mother? And he said, no. It's a sign that I brought the wrong book. I brought the English version instead of the Spanish one. But don't worry. Thank goodness that God also listens and understands English. I have never met anyone that has so much pride from where he comes from than Father Marcial. I once invited him to a professional soccer game at NRG Stadium. Mexico was playing Nigeria that day, and I offered to buy him a Mexican shirt so he can have a souvenir to remember this moment. And he said no. <laughs> he told me that the only shirt that he will wear will be one from Cameroon. About three years ago, around this time, Father Marshall was invited to give the homily at the Soul Cathedral to celebrate the Mass honoring Dr. Martin Luther King. Before his homily, Cardinal Zanardo introduced him by saying the following. Today, we have Father Marshall. He is our great, our guest speaker today. And he will be giving us the homily today. He is, ordinary, he is originally from Africa, but he works for me at St. Matthew the Evangelist at the church. Father Marshall walked up to the ambo and said, Hi, my name is Father Marshall Oyan. I am the pastor of St. Matthew the Evangelist Catholic Church. He then turned back and looked at the Cardinal and said, By the way, I am not from Africa. I am from Cameroon. Everyone's laughed. They all clapped afterwards. Father's homily is perfect. I would like to ask everyone, this one moment, if I could get you to stand. <laughs> Father Marshall, we've had priests come and go here at St. Matthew's. I do not know for how long we will have you here. But one thing I can be sure, for the path that you have gone already, the path that you've already walked in your first 10 years, and the journey that awaits you, I am confident that success will always be with you. Yeah. Let's all give a toast for the success that Father Marshall Oya has had as of now and the success that awaits him in the future. Yeah. Salud. Father Ramirez, you when you were speaking, and we, when you got to that point where you said uh, Father Marshall went with you to see your mother-in-law, yeah. I was Thank really you. touched, and I think everyone was touched, and you said he got a message. And when you said that part, I also got a message. And the message is that I have to learn Spanish. <laughs> yo no soy de Africa, yo soy de Cameroon. <laughs> <laughs> and this is I will call on his brother-in-law Dominic Jinker from DC. Good evening, everybody. I know you have listened to 
I'll keep mine quite short, okay. although I will want to address two topics I speak in English and French. That will be in less than two minutes. The first one is really that I want to speak from the, on behalf of the family from which Marshall was born. I want to speak on behalf of the parish in Tonga that sent him to the seminary and that gave him the education that brought him to the US. And then I want to speak on behalf of the village in Tonga for which he is a role model. Building from everything that has been said, the only thing I can say is that the family is very grateful to Marshall for representing us in this community, for, her, for implementing what he was taught when he was growing up. And the family is listening back in Cameroon, although it's children. But they are grateful for everything that you guys have said. I also have in mind here the St. John Baptist Parish in Dora. That sent him to the seminary. Why, did, why, why was he sent to the seminary? It was based on the community. See what the man you have described in the place that he has become, which was in the child who was at the altar at eight years old, looking to serve the Christ. From what the mother said, as she was always looking forward to doing that. The last one is really that. Marshall is remembering the village he comes from. One, one of the reflections is the school that he is helping to support, to provide affordable Catholic education to so many children who would have been out of school probably, who would have gone to school where the government they have to become a, a, a full fresh citizen, well educated, but grounded in the Catholic teaching. And for all that, I, I want to say congratulations to him and to really uh, say that the entire village is looking forward to more. But since people back in Cameroon are listening in the village, and all this in French. Let me say the same very quickly in French. La famille, que ce soit du côté de la mer, que du côté du père, au Cameroun, est content et félicite son fils qui est avec vous, est très sensible par rapport à toutes les paroles que vous avez, qui ont été présentés et nous sommes tous très contents de savoir que les valeurs qui ont été données à notre fils depuis la naissance, il les a développées au point de les mettre au service de la communauté ici aux États-Unis et dans le monde entier. So I just wanted to conclude by really asking us to raise our glasses and say congratulations to Marshall. Congratulations to Marshall on behalf of the family, on behalf of our original parish in Donga, on behalf of the entire village, and above all, on behalf of Cameroon, and I would disagree with, uh, on, with, the, with you on that, on behalf of Africa. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers.
God is good. And all the time. And we people, sometimes you are good, sometimes you are not. Uh, you are not soy Cameroon, you are soy a Kenya. Uh, I have known Father Marshall for the last 4,537 days. I met him in August 15, 2009. That's the time I was admitted in uh, St. Mary's Seminary in Houston. I drove and unfortunately I did not have a GPS. And I drove with another, uh, with another seminarian who was coming from Puerto Rico. We drove and the guy who had given us directions, he said, when you go on 51, go and take, when you go on 45, go and take exit 51 and then take 10 west. But he wrote 10 east. <laughs> We came and took 10 East, we went all the way to Beaumont. <laughs> Father Marshall was joining seminary the same day and they are waiting. He remembers Father Jose. Yes. And Father Jose is complaining, where is this seminarian? He is saying he is making routes on 610. And uh, after coming and getting to the seminary, Father Marshall was so much ready to drive and come and get us where we were. <laughs> but finally, we came to find the exits to Antoine, and we ended up in St. Mary's Seminary. It's amazing that uh, I was feeling lonely when I got to Houston, because that was my first time down here, but Father told me that it was okay and he was going to make me feel at home. Uh, it's amazing that tonight we are celebrating, or tomorrow we are celebrating the wedding at Kenya. Father Marshu introduced me to drink wine in the seminary. <laughs> he would always have good wine in his room. And I would always go there and have a conversation with him. In my times of struggles, he would tell me, calm down, get some wine, and then we would keep on celebrating. So you see he's still filling up his cup. So. I spent good time with him. He was ahead of me, like uh, he was two years ahead of me. He was ordained uh, uh, ahead of me. 2012, I was ordained 2014. And uh, we kept that friendship going on. When I was ordained, he drove to Dallas and he uh, was uh, gracious to come and visit me during my ordination. So father has become like a family to me. Every time I come to Houston, I know I can always find a place to spend my night. I have come to visit down here with some good friends, and we have always found a place to sleep. So even if he comes from far in Africa, I came to find a brother. Very close to me that for all these years we have encouraged one another. Even if we sometimes we are not in touch very close because I'm all the way in Dallas and he's down here, we will always get a phone call and have a conversation, catch up on how we are doing. When I don't know what is happening, I will only go to Facebook <laughs> and, and I will see where he is. So even next week, if you just need to know where is Father Marsh, you just go to Facebook and probably you are going to find where he is. He has been a great friend of me. He has become a role model for me. He has encouraged me in my journey to priesthood. And even as a priest, he continues to give me great support. So that's why I availed myself to come down here and celebrate these 10 years of his priesthood. I keep on praying that the God blessings will continue to be upon you. Every time I meet people from Cameroon, I tell them I have a Pamela Care <laughs> friend, and I can always identify with those people. So um honored to be here tonight and to celebrate your 10 years of priesthood. Thank you so much everyone for the support you continue to give him as a priest. Many times we are told that a priest doesn't, the priest does not count his wealth on the amount of money that is in his account. The wealth of the priest is the people who show up when he has an event. Whatever we saw today, that's the wealth that Father Marshall has. You coming up here, celebrating with him, 
that is a wealth that he has and he has invested so much in you you have invested so much in him congratulations on your 10 years anniversary congratulations on your graduation we continue praying that god blessings will continue to be upon you your parishioners your family and may the lord continue to give you strength to continue shepherding this community that the lord has entrusted you thank you bishop for coming to honor this um, event it's uh, a very wonderful event to have you here thank you brother priest for being here i'll be leaving soon to head back to dallas i have masses tomorrow so i'll be leaving but uh, you can continue celebrating take what i have not taken so there is still more wine and uh, i'll pray that god blessings will continue to be with each one of you congratulations to you father but even before i congratulate you i congratulate the parish for getting you you are blessed to have him and he is a wonderful priest continue giving him the support he needs to bear good fruit and i ask you to take your glasses and propose a toast <clears throat> Congratulations for the mash you. Yes, and pray that I have a safe journey to Dallas. Okay? God bless you. Bye. Amen. I belong to an association of 48 priests from Cameroon, either working or studying in the United States. And Father Martial is one of us. I'm the second of the senior priests, apart from Father Michael Suniba, his formator. So, Father Marcial, I thought I was popular, but I can discover today that you are, most, you are more popular than myself. Felicitations, mon frère. C'est ma joie d'être ici. Et je ne pouvais pas rater cette occasion. J'ai beaucoup appris de toi et avec toi. Reste courageux, reste éveillé et continue à garder le caractère du bon prêtre. Il y a beaucoup sur tes épaules. Le Dieu sait contre sur toi. Il ne faut décevoir personne. Félicitations pour tes dix ans. God is good. All the time. All the time. God is good. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, it gives me a great pleasure to stand here tonight and uh, listen to you talk about uh, uh, my brother Bruce. I have heard so much about him, and I will return to the Virgin Islands very, 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 not just proud of him, but very delighted because I know I have someone here who has gone from achievement to achievement and people are still looking for more achievement from him. And I know that he is capable to bring those achievements here in the diocese, in the archdiocese of Houston. If I could find a way to steal him from you, I would do so. <laughs> but I know um, the consolation comes from the fact that from time to time, I will be asking him to come down to the Virgin Islands. But when I ask him to come here, please allow him to do so. Greg, yes! To come down. You, yeah. <laughs> Tonight, I'm very, very touch. And when I'm deeply touched, I lack the exact terms to express my joy and to express my satisfaction. But I know that the good Lord somehow will convey to him my sentiments. If you may allow me to ask you to stand, I don't have a wine here to close. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank all those who are behind the scene to allow us to be here tonight and to celebrate as we did. And the best way to do that is to turn to the Lord. So with that in mind, I say, 
Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Gracious God. We come to you tonight in praise and thanksgiving. We praise you for your goodness. And thank you for the manifestation of your love in our lives individually and collectively. You saw fit to bring your son here. And you have allowed him to go from achievement to achievement. You have blessed his work. And we are grateful to you for that. He is a true sign of your living presence among us. And we thank you for that. Dear Lord, as we look forward to the coming days, we pray and ask you to continue to lead him, to inspire him, to protect him, to watch over him. May he continuously feel the power of your abiding presence in his life and in his ministry. And we pray also, dear Lord, that we bless those he bless in your name and grant them to feel the power of your healing presence in their lives. Dear Lord, we thank you for this day and we thank you for all those who continue to support him in his ministry. And this is how you lead us. Tonight, dear Lord, we are grateful to you for the many things that you have done for us, for him for his congregation and for the things that you will continue to do for him in the days to come. We pray that you yeah. grant him the wisdom, the insights, the foresight, and all the graces that you know he needs now and in the days ahead, which we pray will be many and blessed. And with that in mind, I bless this assembly here tonight and ask you to lead everyone back home safely and to grant them to experience the power of your love in our lives, in your lives. With that in mind, we pray. Our help is in the name of the Lord. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I am very happy. The only message I want to send back home to the village where he grew up, where he's well known, at the St. John Baptist Church in Tonga Village, is that they should be proud. They should be proud of their son that's now serving in America. Well done, well educated, well raised. My only request would be that to keep praying for him so he can keep on growing and making the village proud and his brother proud and inspire other kids. <laughs>